um, uh, spending some time up in the peaks, uh, in those mountains, uh, one of the things that was very appealing to, was that uh, it was green. Uh, we'd seen so much of the Colorado Plateau and the uh, arid uh, southwest, and to get up in these peaks, which are at an elevation of about 10, 11,000 feet, that uh, you get up into some uh, uh, green forested areas, uh, pine trees and such. Anyway, the uh, San Francisco peaks are formed from lavas that were poured out of the Earth's surface uh, poured onto the Earth's surface, they're uh, what are called extrusives, or volcanic extrusive, that were poured out uh, about, uh, uh, starting about two million or so years ago, during the early part of what is called the Pleistocene Epoch, the Pleistocene Epoch of the Cenozoic Era. And the Pleistocene is also known as the Ice Age. It's the time when much of North America was covered by glaciers, was covered by continental glaciers that covered huge areas of the continents. And, uh, uh, during the time that the glaciers covered a lot of North America, these lavas were being extruded and poured out on the Earth's surface to produce the peaks that uh, make up uh, this uh, area around Flagstaff. Uh, I didn't know it at the time, but uh, when these lavas were being extruded in Arizona, or what would become Arizona, um, the uh, St. Louis area, uh, St. Louis County area, was a a uh, giant swamp, particularly part of North St. Louis County, uh, this uh, area around Flagstaff. Uh, I didn't know it at the time, but uh, when these lavas were being extruded in Arizona, or what would become Arizona, um, the uh, St. Louis area, uh, St. Louis County area, was a uh, giant swamp, particularly part of North St. Louis County. And uh, in it lived a number of what is called Pleistocene megafauna, the huge animals that uh, lived during the Ice Age, such as uh, the mammoth and the mastodon and the giant beaver. There, for instance, were beavers that stood about four and a half feet high. It's a pretty good sized tooth. Um, there were uh, saber-toothed cats. There were um, giant ground sloths, uh, huge uh, sloths that um, uh, today uh, uh, one quarter size or one sixth size sloth lives in uh, South America. Uh, they lived in the uh, swamps and that that uh, characterized the Ice Age. And a lot of huge animals lived in the uh, 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 lowland areas and swamp areas during the Ice Age. And at the end of the Ice Age, some 15,000 years ago, uh, these animals went extinct. Uh, and this also ends the Pleistocene epoch, ends the uh, geologic time scale. But, uh, when these lavas were being extruded uh, in uh, St. Louis County, where I grew up, uh, the north part of St. Louis County was a huge swamp. And some of those creeks in the area would uh, cut down into that swamp and expose these beds of strata, uh, which are uh, strata are layers of clay from ancient uh, from ancient uh, uh, swamps, ancient uh, uh, swamps in which a lot of uh, Pleistocene megafauna, a lot of uh, mammoths and mastodons and giant ground sloths and uh, giant beavers were living. And their bones have been preserved in these clays. And uh, some of these uh, would turn up later. Uh, here's a variety of them. For instance, this is a tooth of a mastodon, uh, which was an animal that uh, was widespread uh, during the uh, Ice Age, during the Pleistocene Epoch. Uh, uh, or, uh, this is a, or this is a tooth of a mammoth, a uh, big hairy elephant that lived in the uh, uh, Ice Age swamps uh, in much of uh, North America during the Pleistocene epoch. But uh, in the Pleistocene, beside big uh, animals, what, the Pleistocene megafauna, which uh, is mammoths and mastodons, there are also horses and camels. Horses evolved in North America and are found in sediments of uh, the Ice Age uh, throughout North America. In fact, in some parts of Arizona, right below these black lavas uh, occur uh, beds uh, with uh, fossil horse teeth. Uh, horse teeth uh, are found in abundance because there was lots of horses, uh, very similar to the horses that were introduced into North America by the Europeans. But horses went extinct in North America some 15,000 years ago, along with camels. Camels were also a uh, part of the Pleistocene fauna. And camels lived in a considerable abundance, and their teeth and skulls and bones are found in uh, Pleistocene deposits. Again, some of the Pleistocene deposits in Arizona that are covered up by the lavas of the, uh, 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 the San Francisco Peak area. And uh, 
Harsh and camel teeth are also found abundantly throughout the Midwest. And these are some of the teeth. These are harsh teeth. And these are camel teeth. And then there's giant turtles. You might say, well, what in the heck are turtles doing during the Ice Age? But there were periods of the Ice Age when it was very warm. In fact, the Ice Age consisted of four separate periods of glaciation. It consisted of what is called the Nebraskan, the Kansan, the Illinoisan, and the Wisconsin glaciation. And between the periods of glacial advance, it was quite warm. It was actually warmer than it is today. And when, it, when warm conditions would prevail, these uh, uh, animals that lived way to the south, which included giant turtles, uh, would uh, work their way up into areas like uh, Missouri and uh, Kansas and Texas and uh, Arizona as well. And in uh, uh, settlements from the interglacial stages, the stages between the periods of glacial advance when it was very cold, there are found remains of animals that are characteristic of warm climates, like giant turtles. Giant turtles couldn't live in a cold climate. They couldn't hibernate. And uh, reptiles in general, uh, unless they're small and can hibernate, can't live in uh, cool climates. This is part of a beak. And here is uh, some of the parts of the turtle shell. Giant turtles, about the same size as the big turtles that live on the Galapagos Islands, the uh, big turtles that were first uh, made note by Charles Darwin on his uh, trip with the Beagle. Uh, these uh, uh, giant turtles lived in North America during the interglacial stages, during the uh, stages between the advance of ice, when it was actually warmer than it is today. Here's part of the jaws of a muskox. Uh, muskox still lives today in high latitudes. They're found in the U northern Yukon and Northwest Territories. But during the Ice Age, they lived in Missouri and Kansas and Oklahoma and Texas. Uh, this is part of the jaw of a muskox.